This is the Monday, October 25th, uh, 2021 meeting of the Northampton Historical Commission uh, pursuant to an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. This meeting will be held using remote participation and um, everyone does know because they've received the uh, verbal notice that the meeting is being recorded. And we always begin these meetings uh, with open public comment. If anybody joining us has anything they would like to put forth that is not uh, an item on the agenda, this is an opportunity to do it now. And if I don't hear any voices or see any hands or faces, we will um, proceed. And I don't. I have a very brief chair's report um, and that is just to uh, let everyone know that the state hospital memorial park which has been under work in the in the works for many 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 years barbara probably knows the exact number i do not uh is finally finished we had all the planting done earlier this month um and so if you get an opportunity to go up and look at the site um It'll look, it'll look a bit more like a finished product than, it, than it's been all summer and fall. So, I do have a question about that, Sarah. And it does, sure. it looks so nice with the plantings in there. I can't wait till they really grow and flesh yeah. out. And, but um, I know the fountain hasn't been on for a long time. Was it then that you had told us there was an issue with some part? I mean, I assume it's not going to come on until next spring anyway, but. Do you know if that issue had been resolved so that maybe it'll be a little more, um, robust, shall we say, robust spray next year? I, I don't. Uh, so there was some issue with the overflow valve. Um, and I don't know if DPW was able to address that or not before the end of the year. They may have and then just didn't turn it on again because it was so close to the end of the season. Right. Um, I can check with Rich Parcel about that. Thanks. Just be nice to know for the spring that it would be you know ready to go and in good shape. Yeah, so it's a it's a great um, palette of plants. They're mostly natives and the design was intended to um, sustain itself. So it looks a little sparse right now, uh, but overplanting is probably is not advisable on a site like this. So it will take a few years for things to fill in, but I think it's going to be really lovely. So anyway, when you get a chance, go for a walk and check it out. Okay, um, we have a set of minutes to approve from September, the September 27th meeting that was last month. And if all of you've had a chance to look those over, anybody have any comments or I'll corrections? Move I'll move approval. That's okay, great. thank you, Jonathan. A second, any discussion? Okay, we have to vote, Sarah. Uh, we do, uh, Martha? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Barbara? I wasn't there, so I think I should abstain. All right, Steve? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And Craig? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. All right, we'll move on to the continuation of the request for the Local Historic District Certificate of Appropriateness um, for um, the former um, St. Mary's excuse me, that's not the right, St. Mary's is not right. The church at 354 Elm Street, um, that is map ID number 31A001 and 23C043. And the applicant I believe is here tonight uh, to give us an update. And as all of you recalled at the last meeting, um, we did res we uh, reviewed a preliminary um, application for this and specifically asked after a uh, much discussion that uh, we receive full plans, window cut sheets, dormer information, roof material alternatives, door details, um, and historic information about the exterior shell that's proposed for removal. So um, tonight, you know, we're obviously going to be reviewing an update to this, and uh, we are um, being asked to um, consider a certificate of appropriateness for the historic district 
Um, and if not, there are there are alternative um, approaches we can take to this. But I think I'd like to ask the applicant to please, if you have a presentation, to um, speak up at this moment. Yes, Madam Chairman, uh, Larry Tuttle is going to handle the presentation for us. Thank you. Um, I uh, had the opportunity because of the continuation to gather a bit more information on the, the church's origins and uh, things that had progressed during its uh, use as a Catholic church uh, prior to the acquisition by the Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, the some of that material has now been presented as part of the, the paperwork that uh, was included with the application on the continuance. Uh, it does go back through the origins of the church, uh, the formation of that parish, and goes into periodic uh, architectural descriptions of the building. And it's those descriptions that I would like to focus upon because it does uh, support some of the, the comments made by the commission earlier uh, on the first presentation regarding the clear story uh, elements that are on the uh, east and west face of the roof. And those dormer elements uh, in conversation with the uh, proposed installer of the, the new roof would uh, retain those elements as was indicated by, by comment that were very important to the, the overall image of, that, of the structure in the historic district. So those elements would be included. And uh, I'd like to compliment Barbara for going by the site today. And yes, the, the uh, material outside of the building was one sample, and I also brought a sample to uh, Sarah's office uh, of the metal roofing that is being proposed to cover the, the roof plane. The color of it was picked by one of the parishioners for an accent to play off of the light colored tracery of the windows. The artistic rendering that we provided was more of a brown muted color that would be consistent with some of the roofing that had been exhibited during the, the tenure of this building. Uh, in both cases, the metal roofing was selected by this vendor because it is uh, a duller finish so that it is not um, a bright shiny penny out there. Um, it is more consistent with some of the slates and, and other uh, materials that would weather well and be, I think, a, a, a good, easily maintained surface for the parishioners. And they, they are looking at something that uh, does not create problems for them in the short term. I would point out that in some of the description that was in the written material, there was an indication when the church began to consolidate that the building had experienced two issues that were dismissed, but then the, the church was still closed. One was an odor within the basement and the other was a roof problem that wasn't really distinguished or, or detailed in any way, except that there was a roof problem. And <clears throat> upon receiving the, the building, those were very evident in that the mold had developed to such an extent in the basement that aggressive remediation and physical removal of existing finishes was warranted for reoccupying the building. And that was something that could certainly be uh, supported by the building inspector who came on site and, and reviewed it in person along with the fire department. The 
roof problem still has not been fully determined, except that there is excessive amounts of storm water that run into the building. So the remedy that is being sought is to minimize the number of possible joints and areas where this water could run in from the roof structure. And the parishioner that is uh, wishing to volunteer and donate the materials is proficient in installation of metal roofs. And so would do a basically a, a very well-crafted design. And it was with him that I spoke of the dormers and he said that it was certainly something that he could execute. So the, the issue is that we will want to re-roof the structure. We want it to be consistent. Uh, they want it to have a durability and is asking the commission for acceptance of the metal roof color uh, or metal roof material, the color we can still present to the commission some color choices. As I say, the parishioner uh, would like to use the slate gray that has been physically uh, placed on the site as a sample. And we were in our office, artistic uh, license was being taken and we were leaning more to a warmer brown tone that would be consistent with the brickwork. That, that is the extent of, of the, the roofing that we were talking about. Um, as far as the windows, we are uh, dealing with two, as I had made mention of the last time, and the basement where we had observed and had to deal with in a, in a very aggressive manner was to reduce moisture within the basement. The basement in the original building was unfinished and a slab that does not engage itself with the perimeter wall was uncovered when we removed some of the uh, more contemporary finishes that were in place. And the untreated masonry wall uh, was very much a sieve for any groundwater issues runoff from the roof that fell into the window wells and uh, destroyed the uh, any kind of weather protection with the double hung windows that were present. We reduced the depth of the window well, but retained the window opening, at least the top sash, so that from the street, the sight line was unchanged that a window would be present. And it was of the same size as the original window top sash but we're trying to minimize and seal the basement from more water infiltration. And that was a method that, that we felt was appropriate. On the sanctuary windows, the most notable and commented aspect of the reports was the trefoil tracery that is the white trim defining the, the windows in three panels per set. And our initial reaction and what was initially presented in the package was to install a exterior storm panel that would be in three divisions matching the divisions of the tracery as a means to provide both a thermal uh, capability and further protection to the, the leaded windows on the interior. We, given the time that we had for the continuance, did more exploration and discovered that the prior owners had covered the sills of the tracery with a sheet metal that was first not noticed as being objectionable, except for the fact that they did know 
preservation of the submaterial, the original wood material, which further decayed and allowed moisture into the building. The, the plan would be that we would remove the sheet metal as it does not effectively shed the water or diminish any further deterioration and replace the sill elements of the tracery. In doing so, we would be in a sense upsetting the base support for the leaded windows on the interior. So we would propose to the commission that these leaded windows would in fact be removed so that they do not incur further damage. And currently they are in very poor condition, very fragile. There is some of the caning is actually separated from the glass. Uh, so daylight and fresh air comes through. Uh, some of the elements have just wear and tear, some cracking and so forth, because the originally designed supports are not effectively stabilizing that window. This is one of the reasons that in the 11th hour, and I apologize, I don't know if the commission members have had an opportunity to see a last minute email, that I did further research on the restoration and repair of stained glass windows. And it was advised not to place an exterior storm against those objects because of uh, unnecessary thermal buildup and further distortion of a frail system. So the proposal would be presently to remove the windows, the, the stained glass windows for proper uh, address and install for quicker use of the building, the storm window on the interior face of the tracery, which would allow that tracery to remain more expressive than if a sheet of glass was placed over the exterior. So that, that's the intent of what we are trying to do. We don't want to lose the windows and there's going to be such a disruption with trying to replace the sill work in the tracery that we would rather effectively remove the window to do these repairs. So that, that's the process that we would be suggesting at this point and not in any way masking the tracery or the three-dimensional quality of it by placing glass on the exterior of that tracery. The next area for consideration would be the entry doors. And I'm hopeful that everyone from the commission has had an opportunity to not only look at the historic uh, origins and, and first execution of doors, but what the present owners receive the building with because they have not altered the doors, but they received a door that is incredibly inferior, both thermally and to the guidelines of the commission, in that it is a very simplistic aluminum storefront door with a solid aluminum panel within that door frame and is for someone driving by will look like a solid door and it has a textured face so it could be weathered wood but it is a far cry from that. The uh, current owners would like to because they've started with something that in their minds had been accepted, improve it and have a aluminum frame door that would be more thermally uh, performing. Uh, they would not put in the little stained glass insert into the aluminum door because that 
two is just a contemporary inset piece that has nothing to do with the historical nature of the, of the church. The last item that I believe is in what we're covering is the, what was referenced in some of the periodic reports on the building as the contemplative niche. And it is certainly not original to the site. It appears in the you know, late 1900s in any photographs. Uh, it is proportional to a statue that was part of the Catholic face, faith. And the owners, when they abandoned the building, removed the statue, effectively removing the purpose of the surround that housed the statue. The current denomination of faith has no use for it, and it is not in architectural style consistent with the original building. And so it is not physically attached to the building. And so the, the current owners would like to remove it before it becomes a, a liability for maintenance. And it, it would return it more to the original site. And that is the, those are all the areas and I'm sure there's comments on each and every one. So I'm certainly open to any kind of questions. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Larry. We appreciate your comprehensive uh, response to our concern from the last meeting. Thank you. Um, I would um, open this up to questions. Do we wanna take this one element at a, at a time? I'm happy to do that, um, beginning with the roof and dormers. Um, do people have questions about that or comments? Um, I did have a question about, um, because the the and the new and the plans that you sent us, uh, Mr. Tuttle, the um, it did show these dormers, and you explained the dormers would be removed, and then the glass in the dormer would then be put on top of the new roof. Um, but I, I don't. We, but we didn't really see a picture of the detail of where that would be sitting on the roof because this roof has a standing seam. It appears to have a standing seam from what I look at, and it seems to me that that means that this dormer would somehow have to be, I don't know how it would be attached, but I, I'm worried about how it would look. Mm -hmm. And I did go inside the church, but I didn't really look up to see how and whether you can see light coming in through those dormers. So obviously not having true dormers would affect you know, the original intention of them and the way they look from the, you know, if, they, if, mm -hmm. if, if they were just on the surface, nobody would see them from the inside. They wouldn't really be acting as dormers to bring in more light. Right. So that's my um, comment or question about that. Okay. Current, currently, you are absolutely right that on the uh, initial pass, I was thinking the dormer element would be affixed to what would be a, a uniform uh, metal roof that would be covering the surface of, of the, the roof assembly. Uh, in talking with the installer, those would still uh, be fabricated as true dormers uh, in the metal system, that they could cut and, and flash those elements. And if that's the requirement of the commission that they, they would not just affix as an ornament on a otherwise bland roof, those would be fabricated into the roof structure. And uh, the glazing and again, tracery that exists in those dormers would be hopefully transferred to the dormers that are fabricated with the metal roofing. So that those, those would be an exact transfer to the roof system. Anyone else? Questions for Mr. Tuttle about the roof or the dormers? And also, just one more thing about the roof. You had said that this is a duller finish than some other metal roofs might be. 
but I'm still concerned about its appearance mm -hmm. um, because it is metal and I, it's hard to believe there wouldn't be any kind of uh, reflection. That's uh, why we had the sample out on site that there, it has a minimal amount of reflectivity uh, purposely as the finish that is on the roof so that there is less of that. Um, the intent was that it would be comparable to some of the weathered, the original was a wood shingle that would be a weathered gray uh, that would not be very reflective. And so it, it was trying to be consistent with that. Okay, does anybody have any other questions about this? Um, so I did have a question about the dormer again, and then mm -hmm. also um, given the information about the roof being a weathered shingle, um, I just wondered if you had considered doing a gray um, asphalt shingle. The, the question was raised to the installer and if, if it is no other alternative, the preference would be the metal for longevity and a more uniform look. The, the roof needs to be redone because the, there are leaks that are everywhere and it's creating failures in the plaster inside and so forth. So there is an urgency to do that. The problem with the shingles is it's, it is a much slower process, a much more labor intensive process because of the smaller unit size. And then you still have uh, a greater uh, vulnerability to some flashing details and so forth that could be more easily accomplished with some of the larger sheet forms of the metal that they were fami more familiar and working with. So they were looking at the longevity and better performance and end product. And, but if, if there are no other choices made available, they will consider doing the shingle because something has to be done because there is just water coming into the building. Okay, okay, I think that's clear. Um, with the dormer, so you're, you're planning on removing the existing dormers, make sure I have this right. And are you confident in removing it because you're going to be fabricating some uh, new dormers uh, to replicate, correct? But you're going to keep the glass. Correct. The, the facade will be unchanged. The dormer shape itself is, is very triangular. And so mm -hmm. it's easily constructed in the, the metal fabrication. And once they have one dormer, as the example, they can replicate that on the ground much safer. And that would be cut into the roof. It would not be now the first uh, comment of being sitting on top of the roof. I did not want to commit the okay. fabricator to cutting it in, but he said it was something that they could do. Would it, it was not their first okay. preference, but they could do it. So it would be cut in mm -hmm. as the dormers are now. The the replication or the reuse of the gable face is primarily because there is a storm panel on the exterior of those dormers. We don't know the condition of the glass and the tracery. That's why we're saying that our intent is to use the gable as it exists. And so it would be a continuation of what you see presently. Okay. So, so you don't know whether the glass will be intact or will fall apart, or you have no idea about that? Not until we're up there working on the roof. The intent is to do that and certainly keep the overall look to those dormers. Okay. And is there any plan B if the glass doesn't fall, you know, falls apart or? Well, there, there are some steps because there would be, that was necessitated again because of no or very low maintenance and, and just accessing them. And uh, they did install 
what is appearing to be a single sheet of glass across the face of the, the gable. Mm -hmm. We would look to do a similar, again, tracery appearance and glazing. And we may have to actually uh, adhere the, the leaded glass to the, the sheet of glass to hold it in place because we don't know the condition of the caming and so forth. And that we've done some research on some of the artisans that are around and available and everyone wants to work on any kind of uh, uh, reconditioning of the glazing on a flat surface. No one's gonna be wanting to try to do the work up in the air that high on the roof. So, so it is going to be somewhat of a discovery as to the condition and, and the reuse of it. But okay. that's the intent. Okay, so it's a little bit a little bit of an unknown there. Okay, yeah. anybody else any questions on the roof of the dormers? I just want one other clarification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe um, it was just said that the the dormers would be refabricated in metal and then cut into the metal roof. Are they currently wood? structures that it's a combination of some wood and and uniquely the the amount of flashing there almost makes the metal presently <laughs> so uh -huh. okay. so it, it is you know the the predominant weathering surface is a shingle covered wood structure and that that structure would remain intact if if it is usable and sound the shape would be identical and fabricated in the metal roofing material that's being proposed. Okay, thank you. So you, from the outside, you would not know of a difference. Anything else, anybody else? All right, so we should go on to look at the doors. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought it was, you know, a revelation to know that those doors are not original. I guess it's a little odd that they took the glass. I don't was the gla glass in those original, and then they no, there was no glass oh. in the original doors. Okay. That's a it doesn't a, look like it, a that's a generic uh, insert within the door fabricators uh, catalog of some brightly colored chips. Okay, and there's also not. Uh, original to the doors in the transom element, there's some odd colored, almost a gold colored um, configuration in the corners of the shape of the transom in the pointed arch that are just applied to the aluminum and they have no relevance to the historic door. Okay. Anybody with questions about the doors or comments? So you're proposing to replace the um, existing metal doors with a new aluminum frame door. And um, there's a glazed with a question mark in the upper section of this, the transom the, area, is that the, something? No, the upper section was uh, never glazed okay. uh, historically. So the, the question becomes one of if the, commission would be opposed to glazing in that location. It's not, it's not something strongly felt uh, by the church that that has to be glazed. Um, it was more to make the opening look more consistent. I see. Okay. All right. Now I have, Sarah, is it possible to show the, that PDF that we got? Um, because it, it had a historical or maybe the architect's rendering of the door of the church, which appears to be wood with- The original door was a, a heavy oak door and it had uh, customized uh, hinge elements. Yeah, right, with some big very elements, right, right. Yeah. And, and you had said that you felt that maybe replacing these aluminum doors with other ones would, because the aluminum ones had been allowed before. And I, I don't know when those doors were installed, but I assume it's likely that they were replaced before the existence of the Elm Street Historic District. So they wouldn't have had to have any review. Does, does anybody know when they were 
when those doors, the ones we're seeing right here, when they were replaced? Um, you know, I went on the uh, local historic district commission, I think in 2007, maybe, and we did not um, review this project. So in my, in my time there, but it, you know, the district was established in the 90s, so it could have been sometime before that. It's hard to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it unless feels, there's a record. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if they were, but it seems to me that it would really be wonderful if you could all bring yourselves to thinking about a, a wooden replacement, which actually the design, the standards and guidelines really recommend a wood replacement. If you, you know, if you're, if you have a door that's not original and you're going to replace it, try and go back or use a wooden door, which would probably be much more, which would be much more appropriate, appropriate to the uh, building. It doesn't necessarily have to have all that heavy um, metal work on it, but just something that would be a lot nicer than an aluminum door of any kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, if, the, uh, if the parish uh, had the budget for restoration, there would be many things that would be uh, certainly more openly considered. They're looking for a, a functional continuation of the, the main structure of the building. And when they encountered what had apparently been accepted by the, the community, they were hoping to improve it in kind. And, you know, I can't speak for uh, if there is, if there's monies or uh, members of the parish that, that could, as the, the one parishioner is donating the, uh, the metal roof, uh, I, I can't speak to that as what the, the parish can and cannot do. They were hopeful of trying to be consistent with what was apparently already there and trying to improve upon it with something that was thermally effective. So I know it's not a, the, the best answer. It would be great to restore everything to the original uh, intent and, and design, but there's some things that the, the uh, conditions and the economic side of it make it an impossibility to, to uh, consider at this phase of, of the use of the church. Okay, thank you. Any other questions about the doors, commissioners? Okay, if not, uh, we'll go on to the window. Okay. The and sir, if you could uh, share that, that would be great to have as well. Sarah, I want to thank you for sharing the screen since I'm still oh, pretty sure. <laughs> No problem. Uh, you're looking to see the, um, the window information just presented today, correct? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. And I can, I can speak to the fact that um, some points that I would want to make is that in the uh, right of the, at the top is a depiction of the sill and that condition is consistent and it's uh, a lot of moisture, uh, dry rot and, and just uh, no caulk, caulking or sealing to the masonry opening. Uh, so water infiltration is, is pretty apparent. Uh, the surface material that is up and just lifted up above the wood sill is just the, the sheet metal that was put down on top of it and is not caulked at any of the terminations. And so again, any water hitting the surface could migrate to the edges and then enter the building. Uh, in the center picture is what was typically done to the leaded windows. You can see the tracery, which is what we want to try to make as clear and apparent to the, the person 
walking by the building, which is in the white cream color. And our first intent and in what we showed in, in the presentation materials was a storm panel placed in front of that, but it started to obscure through no matter what kind of glass we put there, there was some reflective qualities that you didn't see the, the sharp detail of the trefoil uh, tracery that was original to the building. So that's why we're proposing that the storm panel be placed behind that, that wood tracery and the sills would be uh, refurbished. But in the, three, in the three panels, you can see two panels that look very similar and then an aberration of that in the far left of that panel. And the change in that is that the lower unit, and it's shown in that drawing uh, to the left of that photograph, is a, an aluminum hopper or awning type vent window. The original leaded system had the center panel, the center vertical panel, the lower sub panel was an operable vent. Over the years that failed to be a safe means of operation and, and some of the hardware is remaining, some of it is lost. Uh, some of it looks like a bent nail was just put in to hold it shut. But the, the solution, rather than try to fix the original venting unit, they fabricated an aluminum framed window of a proportion that was similar in one direction, but not similar to the divisions in the patterned glass. So they actually have cut or obscured some of the original pattern with this insert of an aluminum window. So some of the elements remain, but where the cut glass coincides with where the frame had to be, we have no remaining pieces of glass to our knowledge. So it, it has been physically altered and we would have to use the other panels to sort of replicate what should be there. Okay. Okay. I think that that's clear to us. So you're going to be refurbishing the cell and that, and then the storm will go behind on the interior of the building. So it won't be visible yeah. from the outside. Okay. Yeah. Great. Does anybody have questions? Is it clear to everybody? I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it looks from the photograph like there were sets of these windows on each side of the building. Is that correct? So there's eight of these three-part windows. On yes, there's multiple uh, of those windows. Yes. Okay. And so the yep. proposed be the same for each of the. We're looking at one photographic example, but there would be eight of these that you would be. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Others? Okay, if not, we will go on to the, the, so the band shell, the shell. <laughs> um, it reminds me of the hat shell in Boston. Yep. Uh, <laughs> do people have comments about this? this? So this is being proposed for demolish, demolition, removal from the site. Okay, so uh, what we're being asked to do tonight is, as I mentioned before, to uh, decide whether we believe this um, application uh, merits a certificate of appropriateness for the terms of the historic district. Um, we, can, um, we can issue the certificate for all or part of that, I believe. Um, so that would be one option. If the commissioners feel strongly about some of this being appropriate and some not, that's okay. We can do that. Um, and then if we decide we don't want to issue, then we would discuss a, a possible other option. So um, if there's no more discussion about this, I'd be happy to uh, entertain a motion and then we could discuss that. Uh, 
Anyone? Jonathan, you're muted. My apologies. Uh, I'm quite comfortable uh, moving approval, having heard considerable detail. Is there a second on that? Okay. Harvard, okay, second it. Discussion. Well, I'm not completely happy with all of the details, all the aspects. I can say the things that I have certainly no objection to are the changes in the basement windows because I'm convinced the site isn't different and they, they, that seems fine. I, the band or that little crash or whatever, the band shell, I, I think I'm convinced it was not original to the building and doesn't really have a purpose now. So I don't think I would object to that being demolished. Um, in the hopes that those <clears throat> that the um, you know those eight triple windows that the glass will be restored and replaced, I'm not. I see that more as a temporary fix, sort of a deferred part of the project. So I don't think I'd object to that if there's an obligation to make every effort possible to replace those um, repair and replace those stained glass windows because that's such a huge change in the look. Um, of, of those windows. Um, but I think that, and, and also I'm not really happy with the um, proposal to have a different set of aluminum doors on this, what's really a very wonderful building. It has a lot of just quite, quite interesting detail. And even though there is, I know there's one there now, but I feel like there should be some effort made to improve that a bit. Um, and what's the last thing? Oh yeah, the roof. <laughs> um, I'm just not convinced that, that that's gonna look appropriate, particularly with dormers cut in. I actually have a house that has a metal roof and it does have dormers in it, which are wooden and then just flashed, but um, I'm not convinced that that really will work for, um, for this building. So I think that, covers everything. Mm -hmm. Additional, thank you, Barbara. Additional discussion? Well, I am, I am much influenced by Mr. Tuttle's statement of how much, realistically, how much money can be put into this. And I think the commission has probably gone as far as it can to ensure quality so so i'm still comfortable moving moving approval okay Steve? I have a oh Har harvey go ahead i was gonna say on the on the doors in particular i would i guess i don't i don't know our standards well enough it does seem to me it would be ideal to to have them be more as they were in their origins is that what the standards require or is that something that we would consider to be desirable? Because that, that would be a big difference to me. So I can just read um, from the guidelines so everybody knows uh, what they say. Um, this, we know this is not an original door. Um, and so that is being addressed by um, if replacement of a door is necessary, the preferred material is wood, and an um, alternate, alternate material may be considered if the door is appropriately designed with regard to the architectural style and compatible with other doors on the building and is and of low visibility. Obviously, ADA requirements need to be met. Um, So it's, it's, a, it's in a bit of a gray area, but I think Barbara also brings up a very important point um, that we have, an, again, responsibility to maintain the integrity of this historic district. And obviously doors are a very important feature of that. Could, could I, I, could I add for a moment that 
every single one of the exterior doors has been changed in this way. Mm -hmm. That they're all of the aluminum storefront type. Uh, so it's not just the front door to the to facing Elm Street, but the other two doors into the building are identical to that. Okay. Presently. Steve, you had a comment. Yes, I think doors are the um, number one point of concern and um, for a few different reasons. One, that the roof is so visible. I mean, it is, uh, I think Martha me points of the district, right? And that big roof you see walking or biking or um, riding down. You're breaking up a little bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens trying to do this from. And uh, and then the second is the re removal of original material. So to remove the early and then um, put them back is another um, way in which I think the per that doesn't meet um, the guidelines. With the door, with things that are not original to the building and um, threshold, you know, if the if a replacement door does a little bit better, it doesn't have to be a restoration. I think we're in good shape. And um, most of the other work items I have minor concerns about, but I think worth talking more about. The roof, just so I'm clear, you're breaking up a little bit. So you're concerned mostly about the roof and the removal of the dormers and. Yeah, I think to remove original material in order to facilitate a new uh, mm -hmm. approach uh does not meet the standards um so and it you know keep the existing dormers and roof with that proposed new material certainly roof on but the removal of the original material and then the the highly visit i think it's more it's it's what you see when you walk down the street so those are my two concerns okay Right. I, I agree with Steve really strongly about that. And I'm also looking at the, you know, the sections from the guidelines that Sarah sent out to us. And in, in terms of my saying that I would want every effort made to replace the stained glass in those eight triple windows. This even says retention of original historic material, such as curved leaded or stained glass is mandatory. So it really doesn't meet our approvals to have those not returned after um, some kind of restoration. And I understand that this congregation doesn't have unlimited funds by any means, but uh, along with the roof being very visible, those windows are a really major part of the appearance of that building. And it seems to me that that front door, I, I, I mean, maybe not to require that all the doors come back to some kind of wooden door, but that front door, which faces the street if that one could really be improved. And again, not having to look like the original door, but having to just have a much better appearance and probably be wood. Mm -hmm. okay. Craig, you've been quiet. Do you have any comments? Yes. Um, I'm gonna zoom up in altitude a little bit. Buckle your seat belt. This, You're buckled. I think I think the biggest mistake this new owner bought when they, when they made when they bought this this building was they didn't really look too closely into what is a local historic district because it's very difficult to sell churches and the previous owner would have been quite fine and dandy to let this thing melt into oblivion as they've done in other places, other in progress places, and other places where churches have been demoed in the face of neighborhood opposition. But here we have an unusual one. Someone comes along and invests big money into this and they come for our commission. I just think it's, um, we are fortuitous that they came forward 
try to restore this church. The alternative would have been to painfully watch it melt into oblivion and become four house lots or big house. That would have been bad. I think what they're proposing is not perfect, but it will keep the building going for another hundred years. I agree, I don't really like metal roofs on uh, historic buildings. Uh, some little final things around the details are, could be improved, but I'm not, I'm not gonna take a heavy lift on, on voting anything down here if we can't come to an agreement. This is, um, let's look at the big picture here. St. John's Cantius Church, that may get evolved into something else here very short, shortly. Yet here we have someone pouring money into a building that is not really easily savable. Yet the one downtown is buttressed on the other side. This is, matter of fact, there's probably gonna be two, two or three more churches torn down in Hoya, five miles away. And the Polish church there was torn down in the face of really virulent opposition. This one has a buyer who's willing to pour in lots of money I don't know. I just feel like we should be thanking our lucky stars that they're doing this. So there you go. Zoom down to normal altitude. Okay. Thanks, Craig. Those are all, all great points. Um, I think at this point, we have a lot of different um, views on this. And um, we could do a couple things. One is we can um, vote on the current motion, see where we fall. Um, we could revise the motion to improve, um, we could revise the motion to um, grant certificate to a portion. The things that we agree want on which I'm hearing are things such as removing the, the um, crescent shell, um, the lower basement windows, um, but the other items, uh, you know, we could, put back to the applicant to try to find another solution, a solution that is more in keeping in line with the Secretary of Interior standards. Um, and then there would be another alternative, which would be, well, we should take the, 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 the one of those two options first. And my question is, how, how do people feel about that? Do you want to take a vote on what's been proposed and see where we fall? And I have to say there are only six of us here tonight. So if it's a tie, it gets. Uh, if it's a tie, it, the motion would not. Would not vote, right. Okay. So I, I would propose that we take, a, we take a vote on the current motion, see where that lands, and then um, we'll go from there. Okay. Do I need to repeat the motion? So the, the motion was to issue a certificate of appropriateness for all of the work proposed. Um, Martha? No. Jonathan? Yes. Barbara? No. Steve? You're muted. You're muted. I'm sorry, no. Harvey? Yes. And Craig? Yes. Okay. So that means it's defeated. Uh, then the, the next step we could take was to would be to issue a partial certificate for the items that we approve. And I would have to hear a motion on that if people want to do that. And I'm not hearing anybody state that positively. Okay, so then there, the only other option would be at this point um, to consider issuing a certificate of hardship. You're explaining what that is a little bit, Madam Chairman? Yes, I can explain what that is. Um, and so the ordinance 
specifies that a hardship can be issued if owing to conditions especially affecting the building or structures involved, but not affecting the historic district generally, fail to approve an application um, will involve a su substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the applicant and whether such application may be approved without substantial detriment to public welfare without substantial derogation from the intent and purposes of the historic district ordinance. Could you go through option number one again? I apologize, I didn't catch it all. Option number one would be to issue a certificate of appropriateness for certain items. And as I mentioned, the things that I believe people were in agreement about, I think, are uh, removing of the hatch shell or the, the shell, the exterior shell, and the basement windows replacement. And then the other items would be uh, things that would have to get um, addressed subsequently. I'd be happy to move move that if, if that would if that would help. Would there be a second on that? Harvey, any discussion? Um, so we should vote on it then, Sarah. Martha? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Steve? Yes. Harvey? You're muted. Yeah. Okay. That's a yes. And Craig? Yes. All right. Okay. Yes. That motion passes. The applicant then would need some instruction from us, Sarah. And the am I correct about that? I've never been yeah, in. Yeah. So before. your options now would be just to um, confirm that the rest of the elements the, of which the commission was not in agreement or denied a certificate of appropriateness or to consider a certificate of hardship just for those particular elements. Okay, all right. If, if I'm not out of line, uh, I do wanna make a, a clarification that the, we are not, the intent is not on the roof to remove the historic elements that we're reusing those elements that are uh, parent to the clear story uh, dormers. Uh, we would be only replacing unsound material in the uh, form of the dormers where necessary with the new finish. So that that's a little bit of a clarification there. And as far as the entry doors, if the predominant door is the, the front door facing Elm Street, I could go back to the commission to and congregation to address that as potentially more of a solid door. I can't speak for them at this time, but if the other secondary doors, the side door at the front tower and the rear door uh, could be uh, fabricated in the aluminum frame, they're on the sides and rear. Uh, that would be something that if the commission could show a uh, approval on, I could certainly come back to the commission with that specific item. And on the case of the sanctuary windows, the intent is to remove to protect the leaded windows so that a restoration could be even conceived of. Because if the work on the tracery is attempted with the windows left in place, <clears throat> it's almost a guarantee that there would be greater damage uh, incurred to those windows. And the duration of work to restore those windows would leave the openings vulnerable for such a considerable amount of time that we're asking that a storm window be installed on the interior so that tracery is as apparent as originally designed. So that, those are the, 
the areas that just for clarification. Okay. Um, it, do, uh, does anyone, uh, any of the commissioners want to uh, make a motion about this? Hmm. The commission could also add a condition similar to what was done with the recent Smith College project that um, certain elements may need to come back for final approval. Mm -hmm. um, but but in but in concept, the, the rest of the work would be approved. If that's something that would make sense in this case. Okay. I um, just have one comment about the windows. I think that I'm getting the internet connection unstable message again. Can you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, that the um, effort to preserve the tracery is great. That's exactly um, what the guidelines talk about. Um, but I don't have a sense of the, the glazing itself or the stained glass um, in, the, in the report in terms of um, its character uh, and how that possibly could be restored or um, what the process for that might be. So I think that for me, that's come up in the discussion as a, um, a point where there would be more information that would be useful about that. Okay. Right. Steve, are you talking about the both the little dormers and the, the windows, the triple windows? Because do the dormers have some stained glass as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So you're talking about the process, which we really don't know about for or what their proposal is for. It's for all that stained glass in all the windows. Yeah, and as I Barbara, as I heard you read the the guidelines aloud, it sounds like it's it's pretty straightforward what it says in terms of that material and how it's to be treated in the local historic district. So, right. Um, so I think some additional evidence on what what they are, what their condition is, what the possible you know other treatment approaches would be, and maybe we can. Um, hear that one again if possible. Yeah, and I would just add while we're discussing these ones that we're concerned about, um, I, I am finding the roof material um, to be really out of character with the church, um, you know, it, especially if we knew that the original roof was a, a shingle. Um, I think it should be, attempts should be made to make it a shingle, give it the texture of a shingle. I realize it's a lot more detailed work um, but I think it will be closer to its original. And in terms of the doors, um, you know, I actually live right near this building, so I see it every day. And um, the, while the front door is really visible from Elm, it's really the city facing doors are the ones that people uh, see, you know, driving by. Um, so I guess, I mean, asking, you know, if, if there can be some exploration of doing a wood front door, um, you know, what is it, what would be involved in doing at least the door that's facing um, or facing downtown, I guess, um, because it is so visible and it's so visible in the district. The back door, um, the rear door is not visible from a public way, so we wouldn't weigh in on that anyway. So those are two, two of my concerns. Um, anybody else have other comments? And we should try to find a way to wrap this up, at least for tonight, and um, put Mr. Tuttle on his way, uh, give him some direction. I, I guess what I'm hearing is that um, there is uh, a lot of support for, or support for the basement replacement, removing the hatch shell or whatever we're calling it, and that we would like to um, have a follow-up um, with Mr. Tuttle and, and perhaps the congregation about their capability or, or, or how they can approach those things that we're concerned about, meaning the roof, the windows and the doors. And it, it, am I, are you in agreement about that, the commissioners? Yes. Does, and then am I stating it as the way you hear it? Yeah. Okay. All I right. Mean, actually, could I just ask, uh, this may take more time than is appropriate right now, but I, I do think it, I would be interested to know what the position of seven day Adventist is on stained glass windows, period. I mean, Catholics like them. As to whether stained, they're appropriate for seven day Adventist churches at all, I don't know. I've never been in one. 
the, the other thing that I do think is I just think about the potential hardships of all of this is I'd be interested in the total cost of the, the what has been proposed already and what the annual budget is of the congregation. Because I do, mm -hmm. it seems to me this, it would not be hard to bankrupt to make this project undoable. Uh-huh, those are really good points, Harvey, yep. Um, I have a hand up from Jeff Linthwaite. Yes, Madam Chairman, I'd be happy to address uh, Mr. Hill's question. First of all, we'd encourage you to visit any Seventh-day Adventist church that's near you. All are welcome, come on in. Uh, we're not opposed to stained glass. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, we do sometimes struggle when we purchase churches like this where the stained glass is very um, theologically specific, should I say. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't typically do a lot of that in our stained glass, but we have a lot of churches with a lot of stained glass. And we're, I don't believe we're proposing eliminating the stained glass at this in these windows as well. I think Mr. Tuttle is working hard to explain that we want to uh, restore it, protect it, and put the protection on the inside as opposed to the outside. Um, it's the hopper detail that is a problem uh, that was added. Uh, so no, we're, we're, we're not opposed to stained glass. We'd like to do what we can to save it and, and, and go from there. Uh, regarding the budget, yeah, we're upside down, backwards, sideways, and way behind. We have some very committed members who are getting mortgages on their homes and their businesses to fund this project. Mm -hmm. um, we, at, at our corporate office, I'm speaking to you today from our corporate headquarters out here in uh, Lancaster, and we subsidize all capital projects like this to the tune of 10% uh, for most of our churches. So the local congregation has to fund 90% of this project. So they have a large amount of borrowing, a large amount of cash, a lot of donations in kind, and some skilled people who are uh, giving deeply of themselves. So I'd be happy to show the, uh, the budget, the, the total budget, the overruns in the budget, the, the cans of worms we've discovered that Mr. Tuttle has helped us work through, mm -hmm. uh, the cash that the people have presented. So yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're working hard to uh, save. And I, I appreciate... Uh, Craig's uh, kind words uh, that we were able to uh, purchase this building. You know, we sold one in Florence. I think uh, the seller plans to make it a parking lot. Uh, so I think that building in Florence is, is on the way out as well. Nice little New England style church that this congregation sold. Um, you know, we'd be happy to come back on these couple of items. Seems like that's where we're headed. Any guidance you can give us would be great. Uh, you know, I'm a little... A little disappointed about the roof. I understand your position. Um, I think Mr. Tuttle researched that this was, you know, wood at one point or, uh, you know, some lesser material than asphalt shingles. And, and we're trying to upgrade it beyond asphalt shingles. Um, and uh, we're willing to save the, the dormers and the stained glass there. So, and, uh, you know, a nice dull color. So we're trying to, trying to work with you doing the best we can. And we'll be back on these items. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that information. It's very helpful. Okay. Um, I think we need to um, make a decision about this, whether we want to go ahead. So right now, just uh, to remind everybody, the we are at the point where we have actually voted to approve a certificate for the basement windows and removal of the hatch shell. Um, and we're at a point now whether we want to try to move um, towards some sort of sort of hardship recognition or to ask them to come back with more information before we can make a decision about that. You know, what are the, what are the cost comparisons of these things and how onerous is this and does it merit a, um, some type of a hardship decision? Um, I would like to, to see those figures and comparisons before I make a decision about um, okay. issuing a hardship uh, approval. Okay. Are people in agreement about that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think it would also be interesting to just look at the possibility of an asphalt roof. So uh, that might be one way to get past this hurdle. And then I think if the uh, question with the stained glass is removing it, storing it, and potentially reinstalling it later, we know exactly that plan looks like where it would be stored, you know, those sorts of things. So I think there might be a way to do this to, and to do it in a cost-effective way. 
Um, and so maybe it's even a two, two alternatives, right? This is alternative one, which is asphalt roof and storing. And here's the plan for storing the, the glass. Um, and then option two, you know, um, something slightly modified from what we saw today, something like that. Okay. The one thing I'm missing right now is an accounting of the financial implications of the various decisions we could go in. And I'm not sure how much the commission has the right to, to ask those questions. This is still very, I'm still very new to all this. Well, you know, one of the things we're considering is a um, certificate based on hardship. And so hardship is, you know, one of the hardship factors, obviously, is financial. And I think um, in order to make an informed decision about this, because we are, um, you know, if we were to say approve all of this now, without um, knowing that information, um, you know, we would be approving it against the Secretary of the Interior Standards, which is part of, you know, the guiding principles of the Historical Commission. So um, I think we really need to have as much information so we're all comfortable. Yeah. Um, I think you know, Craig's point was great. It, he's absolutely right. We don't want to lose this building. It's one of the anchors of this district. Would, the, would, there, be, would there be hardship, small age, uh, if we postponed a decision one month? That's a good question. Maybe Mr. Tuttle Mr. has Tuttle. a, yeah. a view well, on that. The, the urgency, and, and admittedly, it was uh, as we were trying to prioritize moving towards an occupancy of the building because the congregation is looking to occupy and hold service at the premises. Uh, we were searching out interior resolutions with a greater urgency than some of the exterior. We're now confronting a seasonal change where it becomes a more severe issue to address the roof and to address the sanctuary windows. And that's why we were, we were in front of the commission at this point. Unfortunately, we had negotiated some of the building interior work with the, the city, uh, with the building department and fire department to ensure a safe environment for reoccupying the building. So we, we had to pull the building back much further than what was first anticipated upon acquisition. And so there's been considerable effort made on the interior and we're now unfortunately confronting the seasonal changes that are creating a little more anxiety for the, the congregation to realize a weather tight building. Uh, we're not saying that we're choosing shortcuts, but we're trying to work as diligently as possible. Will a month time uh, impact the project? And it certainly will, because we'll be that much closer to some winter conditions. Uh, that would require, certainly in the case of the windows, we would have to drape and mask off those areas. We would be somewhat restricted with some of the materials that we could use for the sill replacement because of uh, temperature. Uh, certainly, okay. you know, there would be an impact. <laughs> I, 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 I hate to interrupt, but as I told you before, I've got yep. to leave in the I know, Jonathan, you yep. do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the question is, you know, do do people feel like they need more information before to make before they make a hardship decision about this? And um, we can we can take a vote on that if we have to. I could, I could vote for hardship now. Okay. I'm afraid I would need more information. Okay. But there's no is is there a provision that we could have a meeting sooner than a month from now? We could presumably. Could we not? As as yeah. Enough notice is given. That would be good. That would be good. Yeah. I mean, okay. I can't. I can't speak for Jeff and uh, the conference, but uh, we have quite a bit of financials on the project costs and so forth okay. that have been assembled. So if if we have a uh, an opportunity to pull some of those uh, 
actual numbers of expenditures and so forth uh, forward in, in a format that's beneficial, uh, certainly I would not be opposed to participating in that. Okay. And would, there be right. in, would there be any point in meeting in one week? We can pull the financials together well within one week. Um, okay. it's, it's not difficult. Okay, so Sarah, you'll send out a doodle poll, a Google poll for us to respond to. Can we do that? Uh, we have to continue the hearing to a time and date certain okay. at this point. So we'd have to Well, I would, I would propose a week from today, same time. I have a previous engagement that evening, but someone else could share it. Barbara, the vice chair. for me. Would a different time in a week on that Monday help, Martha? Uh, earlier in the afternoon, four in the afternoon, we probably could do, I could do. That would be great. Better for me, actually. Does that work for everybody? This would be the only item on the agenda. Okay. Yes. I'll be on vacation. I'll, I'll be on vacation on Cape Cod at that moment. Okay. But I'll you could you could zoom in though, right, Craig? Yeah. I believe I can. Yeah. Okay. Great. So Sarah, you'll send uh, information around to folks on that. Yes. And so someone would just need to move. Uh, once once you're done, but uh, someone would need to move to continue the hearing until November first okay. at four. I I move that. And then I'll have to leave. Okay. I, I said that. Okay. And we do we need to vote? Uh, yes, quick roll call. Martha? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Steve? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And Craig? Yes. Oh, okay. Great. Goodbye, everybody. Hi, right, Jonathan. Thank, thank you, you for thank hanging you. in there. <laughs> okay. And Larry, thank you so much for. Um, and you know, along with the information the, you provided, we'll look forward to seeing you in a week. Okay, along with, the, as well. along with the financials, I'll outline more clearly the process that we're discussing with the sanctuary windows because okay. of the concerns raised there. And I will also speak to the uh, congregation regarding the, the refurbishing or more accurately restoring uh, the selective entries to a more acceptable form. But I know that on some of the, the doors they're looking for, again, ease of maintenance, ease of use uh, with an aluminum door. So we'll look at specific entries. Great, thanks right. so much. Thank you. All right, thank you. You're welcome to stick around. We're um, I can do more things, but you're also welcome to depart. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So Sarah, it's seven, almost seven. Um, what items on the agenda are the most important and what could we um, push off for a month? Uh, the section 106 review does have a time frame from when it's submitted to the commission and to Mass Historic, and I, it's creeping up on the end of that. Could we do that next week? Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Is everyone okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's put that on the agenda as well. Um, I know that you're anxious to get the subcommittee established for the preservation plan. Yes, that would be great as well. Um, let's see, there are five of us here now. <laughs> Um, and Steve had, uh, at the last meeting, Steve had expressed interest and I <clears throat> um, also volunteered. Are there other, and other, is there anybody else think that both Dylan and Jonathan declined? Um, Barbara, you were not there at the last meeting. So this is to- um... To serve on a subcommittee to help direct the preservation planning effort. Um... I believe I could do that. Okay. And you were looking for three, right, Sarah? However many people are interested. Okay. Or Craig or Carvey, would either of you like to join us? Not I. And Craig? No, I'm going to be uh, 
getting ultra busy this coming year. Okay. All right. Do we need to vote on that? So okay. it's uh, composition so far as Barbara, Steve, and Martha, was, was it you as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, please do. Can we vote ourselves in? <laughs> yes, you can do that. Okay. All right, so a uh, motion by someone to establish the preservation plan subcommittee consisting of Barbara, Steve, and Mark. I would, I would move that. We're all second then. Great, thank you. Uh, Martha? Yes. Jonathan? Oh, he's gone. Uh, Barbara? Yes. Steve? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And Craig? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. And what else? Uh, CPC, does that need to be decided tonight? We don't have to do that tonight. Um, just to recap the local historic district design guidelines to give everybody a little bit of homework. Um, we realized that the design guidelines had never been officially approved by city council, which doesn't carry the same weight as, as they should have. So if people could just review them and if anything pops out as needing updates or something that just hasn't worked over the past 10 years, I can't believe it's been 10 years already, um, either come up, you know, come up with something that would work or just flag that and let me know and I can do some research. So one of the, and one of the items we know that's on that list are solar panels. Yeah, um, which we confronted in our last uh, meeting and I think realized how, um, Kind of just uh, vague and in in almost a way nonsensical. The existing guidelines are pertaining to solar panels, so take a look at those in particular. Um, okay, I think um, in, then in that case we will be um, moving the community preservation um, committee representative um, decision till our next meeting. Is my is my term expired, Sarah? I should know. I don't. Uh, it is expired, but you serve until replaced, so that it's not okay. Good. So we can just do that in November. That's no big deal. Um, and then I think I think that's it. Unless anybody else has any other items that they wanted to. I'd like to uh, mention something here. I just uh, just located the, the new owner of that Seventh Adventist Church. It will be demoed here in uh, Florence. Yeah. Want me to mention the name of the person? Um, that Craig, just so I'm clear, that's the that's the church that's on the corner of Park, right? No. Oh, okay. It's, um, if you're going up North Main Street, which is Route Nine, you'll go past the uh, the, the new Tandem Bagel Bakeries. Place that used to be the uh, the little cafe that was recently purchased by Tandem Bagel Bakery, and then about two houses, two buildings further north and west on the right is a genuine church-looking building. That is the building owned by the Seventh Day Adventist, just recently sold to a new owner, who apparently wants to make it a parking lot. So I guess we'll be hearing about that. But it is, uh, is owned by Samuel Ostra of Salmon Studio. Hmm. So there you go. All right, thank you. Hot off the press. Okay. Anything else from anybody tonight? Thank you for hanging in there. That was a long discussion, but important one. And it's 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 a tricky project. Can I mention something now that we're out of the hearing there about this? A good sure. solution yeah. might be that, you know, the metal roofs are not consistent with the historic district. I understand that. But those metal roofs are double what a, a, uh, a shingle roof would be. The, the main driving factor for them seems to be the ease of installation to quickly button up a leaky roof. Yeah. If we could um, 
suggest to them the, the prudence of having a less expensive, yet, yet a more thoughtful shingle roof, maybe even a metal shingle roof, which may afford a quicker installation, but still be more cost effective than the big sheet metal roof. There's, there's options here. I don't think they're really looking. Um, yeah, thanks. I think that's true. Well, we'll be discussing it more next week. So we'll find out. So. All right. Well, if nobody has anything else, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn and we can uh, pick this up next Monday at four. I move to adjourn. Uh, Discussion, all in favor? Uh, yes. Thanks everyone.